You can animate elements in the DOM with CSS or JavaScript. This video is going to show how to animate DOM elements using JavaScript without any frameworks. First, I will show you how to create an animation by programming gradual changes in an element style. Then I will talk about the new element.animate method. To make animation possible, the animated element must be animated relative to a parent container. The parent must use relative positioning while the animated element must use absolute positioning. So if you see up here, we have the container, my container, and then we have the child element, the, the my animation. That's what the code is going to animate. And if you see here, we have the container that has the relative positioning and we have the, an the my animation that has the absolute positioning. We can use a timer to call gradual changes in an element style and when the timer's interval is small the animation looks continuous. So let's look at the code. So you can see when this button is clicked it calls the my move function which is right down here. So we're going to get the element by ID, get my animation and assign it to element and then we're going to set the position to zero. And then we're going to start this set interval and we're going to pass in the frame function that we're going to run and we're going to run this function every 10 milliseconds and we're going to assign this to ID. That's so we can stop the interval when we need to. So in the frame function, if position equals 350, that just means that the square is at the end of the, the, bo the box here. Let's put that at the beginning. So if the square is at the end of the box, we're going to clear in a interval and we pass in the ID that's up here. That just means we're going to stop running this function. We're going to stop running the frame function every 10 milliseconds else we're going to move it. So we're going to increment the position from 0 to 1 and then we're going to, to set the, the top and the left style to the position. The first is going to be 1 pixel, 2 pixels, 3 pixels, 4 pixels, 5 pixels, just like that. And then it's just going to animate across the screen. And you can easily use different style elements. Instead of using top and left, you can use um, the color, you can use size. Uh, any CSS element you can animate using this method. Now I'm going to show you a different way to animate using the element.animate method, which is part of the Web Animations API. And this method is actually the animation method with the best performance. So let me paste in the code here. Now this is currently only supported in newer versions of Chrome, Firefox, and Opera. However, there is a polyfill that you can use to add support for most other browsers. Check the description for a link to the polyfill and then you'll be able to use this all the time. So this is going to animate the div item, so I need to add the div item to the HTML. Okay, so here's the div with the ID item and in the CSS I've already added some CSS. Uh, it's going to start with the background blue, position absolute, and then the height width, and the margin is just going to make it so it centers right in the, the square. So, oh, you can see the animation happening right now. Now let's go over the code that shows how this animation is created. So first we get the item, the get item by ID item, so that's that div, and then we're going to call item.animate. Into the animate function we're going to pass two things. This first thing we pass in is the keyframes. So this is just an object formatted to represent a set of keyframes. And then the second thing we're going to pass in is right here, which is the options. So let's look at the keyframes. In the keyframes, it's just going to go from one keyframe to the next. So in this first keyframe, it's going to um, set the transform. We're going to set the scale to 1. That's just 100%. So we're not actually doing anything for that. And then we are going to set the background to red. That's how we started. And then the opacity to 1, which is 100%. So the first keyframe is basically just how we started. Now the second keyframe here, let's go on to the next line. Let's pop this over a little bit. The second keyframe, we're going to do a transform, have the scale go to 0.5, so 50% size. We're going to rotate it 270 degrees, set the background to blue, and the opacity to 0.5 or 50%. So it's going to animate between this keyframe and this keyframe. And now the offset is optional. 
if you don't have offsets, it will evenly distribute each keyframe within the duration. But if you have offsets, then it won't be equally distributed. So since I have 0.2 here, it's going to go from the first keyframe to the second keyframe in 20% of the time, and then it'll take 70% of the time to go to offset 1. The offsets in the keyframe have to be in numerical order. So we have 0, 0.2, and 1. It always ends with 1. If we change that to um, 0.5, you'll see the animation will be slightly different. So it's just the first part of it is going to take um, half half the, the time instead of just the 20% uh, of the time. So you can see the last keyframe, we put the scale back to 1, we rotate it to 0 degrees, and set the background back to red, opacity back to red. So for the options, we have, um, you set the duration in milliseconds, so that's 2 seconds. Uh, the easing, um, we can change this to something like uh, linear. And let's see what that's going to look like. So here it's not going to change speed as much between the different keyframes. And then the delay is just how long it waits before the animation runs after the page loads. And iterations, we're going to keep going on forever, but you can just make it go like two or three iterations. Uh, direction, it's going to alternate. So that's why it keeps changing the direction that it's spinning. But if we put um, normal here and we run that, now you can see it'll just always keep going the same direction. And if you hit, if you put reverse here, we'll always go the other direction. Now all these options are optional. And this fill here, this fill is going to dictate whether the animation's effects should be reflected by the element prior to playing, which would be backwards, or it should be retained after the animation has completed playing, which is forwards, or you could put both. And one thing to know about the keyframes up here is that you can animate pretty much any CSS property. So transform, background, opacity, these are all CSS properties and you can put different ones there to animate different properties. So that's animation. Thanks for watching. My name is Bo Carnes. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, use your code for good.